So I just saw a video on TikTok and it was about racism in the German school system. That's a tongue breaker. The German school system against black African children. Myself, as you already know, I came to Germany when I was 12 years old and I learned the language. It was not easy. But what I didn't tell you was that when I first came, that time they were doing Vorbereitungsklasse. I don't know if they still do this Vorbereitungsklasse. It's like a preparation class where the kids learn how to navigate the German school system. You learn how the German school system works. You learn how the subjects are done. For example, in mathematics, how they have different symbols. Uh, like in Ghana, we have for times, we do this. But in German times, it's just a dot. Division in Ghana, we do dot, dash, dot. In Germany, it's just two, col like two dots, like a colon and all of that. So that's where you learn all of this. And then you learn that there's no assembly. You just go and sit down at your table and then the bell will ring and blah, blah, blah. So I did four Brighton's class there. And instead of one year, I did three months because my learning pace was so good for both my brother and I. We were actually quite brilliant because in Ghana, we're in a private school. So you know how learning in Ghana is different. You know, in Ghana, you have to be disciplined. The teachers are on your case. It's like very strict. And in Germany, it's more like, yeah, a bit relaxed. So if your parents are not hands-on, and you don't have that push from home you're going to play the whole day basically back to my story i went from four classes after three months i was in hauptschule and when i got to hauptschule they were like oh because i was doing so well they're thinking of taking me to a bilingual private school and that time the school fees was i believe six thousand euros per sem you know germany we have two sems in the academic year both um in uni and also in the normal school, we have the half year, blah, blah, blah. So pro half year was 6,000 Euro and for the gesamte Schuljahr was then 12,000 Euro. Und das konnte sich meine Eltern nicht leisten. My parents couldn't afford 12,000 euros for one child, for just me. What about my brother? So they decided that, okay, then gymnasium would be the best option. Obviously, it's cheap, it's free <laughs> and they don't have to pay anything and I don't have to be away from home and all of that because it was supposed to be an internat. It was supposed to be a boarding school as well, if I remember correctly. So I get to um, gymnasium. And so my first beginning, my racism was not from the teachers, but from the other kids because we were the only black kids in the school. And it was a very small place. If you know Walderstadt in um, Baden-Württemberg or around Stuttgart, it's on the outskirts of Stuttgart. Waldestadt is very small and our school was in Mannheim, also a very small place. And the other kids in, this, in our Vorbereitungsklasse were Russians. They were the only other foreigners, actually. So we moved from Waldestadt to Sundelfingen. So yes, I grew up in Sundelfingen. I went to Stitz Gymnasium. When I got to Stitz Gymnasium, they said that because I am, I'm not even up to a whole year in Germany and I'm coming from the Hauptschule, they don't want to overwhelm me with the workload so i should go from class seven that i was in the hauptschule to class six mind you in ghana in that same academic year i was in jss2 so i was in the eighth grade that's in class eight when i got to germany but i was i was too young for my class in ghana because i was i started school early my mom was a teacher so i started school early so i was the youngest in my class in ghana when it took me to class seven in the hauptschule it wasn't a big deal because yeah those were my age mates right most of them but when i come i came to the gymnasium i was taken to class six so within one academic year i've been taken back two years for me it was also something serious so they told us that if i work hard enough and i'm able to catch up then they will take me to the 6c at that time so the a and b was doing things that was normal for the school like for the gymnasium when their age group but the class c's were doing like the turbo class so instead of them doing eight years in gymnasium they would do seven years so they would do class six and uh, five six seven eight nine ten they would skip 11 and they would do 12 and 13. so because of that they're always one year ahead of the regular a and b class so that was the agreement and they said okay so i finished i went from class 6b to 7b and after 7B, after my assessment, they said, okay, I'm ready to go to 8C instead of 8B. So that was when I was supposed to get my one year back. And as I said, this turbo class, they do everything a year earlier. So in class seven, I started with Latin. I was loving it as an ancient Latin. 
and that is why i'm an interpreter today because i'm a language devil and i'm a polyglot and i loved it so <laughs> so i get to class 80 and i'm already missing a year of everything mathematics latin biology chemistry physics they had studied physics and i was in 7b and in 7c they were doing physics and i didn't know anything about it so i had to catch up on every everything i did my best to catch up honestly i did and i was i remember when i first got to 8c my first grade in latin my first test i did i had a six as in f straight f but i finished class eight and i was back in with my eyes like i had my a's back and i want to thank my teacher then he was so bad to me like not racist but he would always say phoebe nach oben streben 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 es wenn du die eins hast ist es am schlimmsten denn dann kannst du dich nicht mehr verbessern he was, he was always going to be like keep going 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 so you, you start getting your a's and that is when it's going to be the worst for you because when you have the a's you can't get any better there's no improvements for people who have a's so he would always tease us with that. So when I finally got my ace, he said, now you are in the, like, in the dungeon. There's, there's no way out for you. And it was like, he's, he was being sarcastic, but that was his way of motivating me, you know? And that was good. I wish the other teacher, the math teacher would be like Herr Thomas, but he wasn't. This man hated my guts. He, he didn't want me to excel when I would raise up my hand to say, and answer it was wrong he would punish me for it by giving me a four in an oral grade and obviously when i came to germany i was doing well i was putting in so much work that i never got anything less than a 2.5 in a mutation note i don't think i probably maybe once or twice i'll get a three but a four what like four means somebody who disrupts the class and all that because listen all i wanted to do was learn and i was already given this pressure by my parents especially my dad that you have as a black child you have to do it on a 50 percent and so i was putting that actually i was exhausted and my parents were also fighting at home you know like i was tired and this man too was giving me like stress and oppressing me so at some point my father went, went to the school and he said because my homework is wrong that's why i got the phone my answers are not are not correct I would want the teachers, if you are a teacher in Germany, whether a Ghanaian teacher in Germany or whatever, please let me know if this is how you really do it, that kids who do their homework at home and they come to school and the homework is wrong, that they get bad grades for the homework. Because I thought that you get plus points, like not plus, but so you don't get marked down for doing your homework. If it's wrong, we correct it in class. That was the whole point. You correct it in class and then we build on the homework to move forward. But that was really, really disturbing for me. So that was that so sometimes i'll be in class i won't even be talking somebody else was talking he'll be like Phoebe, psh. and everybody was like Phoebe had gone excuse that we didn't say anything so one time they had to change our classrooms because of something i don't remember what made us change classrooms but i think my classroom was 203 and had to go to 207 or something and one of my friends jessica jessica always had like a lot of books with her she was someone who loves to read and everything anyways she was carrying a lot of things and she got to the classroom later than me so when she got in, inside a joke with Jessica, and even like with some of the girls in the class, I was like, Jesse, come not far name. Yes, it's in the shlam. Like, Jesse, come to the front. That's where the smart people sit. This man looked at me and said, Echt, CB, then to wirklich to be shlam. And I'm like, ah. The beyond the white object of my banana or patch and my banana come back gymnasium. I was in gymnasium after under a year in Germany. I came to Germany in November 2004. By June, July 2005, I was in gymnasium. I was not lazy. I was not a shark, but at least I was a baby shark. I beg. And then his own daughter, who was German, white German, was in Real Schule. And if you know German school system, there's Hop Schule, Real Schule, and Gymnasium. And it's according to your grades that you get a recommendation. And this is where some of the racism, most of the racism I hear, like I know Ghanaian kids in Germany who have experienced racism in Germany, right? And when it comes to them leaving from class four to their secondary school, as in Hop Chule, Real Chule, Gymnasium, or maybe even Gesam Chule, the teachers will be like, oh, your child will be overwhelmed in Real Chule, so let's take them to Hop Chule. They'll be overwhelmed in Gymnasium, so let's take them to um, Gesam Chule and everything. Please, as a parent, you have to be present. As a parent, you have to be present and be following up with these teachers. 
also check on your kids make sure they have their homework done if they need help get them shula hilfe or sign them up for online classes and all of that let me get back to my story so when this man told me that do i think i'm one of the smart people i just said mister i don't want to say his name here blah 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 yeah ich denke dass ich schlau bin ich bin gerade mal vier Jahre in Deutschland, noch nicht mal, I think I wasn't even four years, but I said I noch nicht mal vier Jahre in Deutschland und ich habe es von der Vorbereitungsklasse in die Hauptschule geschafft und dann von der Hauptschule direkt auf dem Gymnasium. Wo ist ihre Tochter? Auf der Realschule. Ich bin sogar schlauer. And he was like, haha, haha, I'm awesome. Anyways, this man did the same thing to my brother. My brother also went to the same school as me, but... At that time, my friends, though they were seeing it, they weren't understanding it properly. It was like their first time with this and all of that. And But my brother, he was able to gather evidence with his classmates and the teacher was sacked from the school. Okay? So sometimes, we the kids can do something, but in my case, as I already said, I was overwhelmed with other factors also. So I just concentrated on getting out of school passing and making sure that the deficit in my grades in math i was making them up with other places because i wanted to have this two point average i knew that one point i have i have too many distractions but at least two points there i will make it so i made my so i comma abby and i left but racism is real in germany it does happen and in the next video i will talk to you about what it has done to me and where i stand on racism right now but yes, racism is real and I would implore all parents, African parents in Germany that please keep a keen eye on your kids' academics, okay? Because you are going to be their, their advocates when it comes to school. Go to the Elton album, go to Elton Bayrat and please stop using your kids as interpreters. If you think that you can't speak the language, you don't understand everything, go with another adult. At least even pay for an interpreter. Take them there so that your child will also relax and be a child. Because all these things, your child going with you there and all that, you know, it also puts a strain on them. And for the teacher, it confirms that the child is from a weak background. Okay? So, they are doing their reason, but we have to work also because... At the end of the day, we don't know everything in this country. So we have to approach it differently than the way we would approach it if we're back home. Thank you for listening. And follow and like and comment your own experiences. And if you have solutions, please comment down below. So the solution that my parents did was that they worked with the teacher and then they got me the Nachhilfe, as in the extra classes, so that my homework would be correct. Which still, it wasn't. I think he moved me from the four in the overall grade to a three. And my grades, I was just writing 333 in math. Like, not my brain. I, I had just lost interest. The harm had already been done, okay? But what do you think would be other solutions that other parents can do if they find themselves in this situation? Another thing is that, remember that when they say your child should go to help Shule instead of Real Shule or Gizam Shule instead of Gymnasium, remember that it is just a recommendation. If your child has the grades and has passed for that particular school, please let them go and you work with your child together. Don't put extra stress on your child, no. But if, if you believe and if your child believes that he can do it, please take your child to that school, okay? All right. Follow, like, comment, and let's go to the next session. Bye.